Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This video is all about the nuts and bolts of the GM Turbo Hydromatic 400. And I mean that in a literal sense, as we are gonna be covering torque specs, as well as torque patterns of all the internal and external bolts on this automatic transmission. If you're new to the channel here, please know that we recently finished an entire build series on this automatic transmission. Links to each and every one of those episodes can be found in the video description down below. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. We're gonna begin by tackling all of the external bolts first, starting with the extension housing. Unfortunately, we've got a mismatch of parts here. We've got an extra long output shaft paired with a short two-wheel drive extension housing. These two would normally not live together. It's what we gotta work with for now, so uh, please excuse that. The extension housing, two-wheel drive, uh, we like to torque these bolts to 20 foot-pounds. Uh, if we were dealing with a four-wheel drive unit, then uh, we would not have an extension housing. Instead, we would be bolting on an adapter housing. Uh, again, we would be torquing those bolts to 20 foot-pounds. However, in the case of four-wheel drive, uh, due to the added weight to the rear of the trans, uh, we like to uh, apply some uh, medium strength thread locker to these bolt threads before installing the bolts. Uh, while we're on the topic of the extension housing, the transmission mount, uh, we would bolt that up and torque uh, those bolts to 30 foot-pounds. And a cross member uh, from the transmission mount over to the chassis of the vehicle, those bolts we would torque to uh, 30 foot-pounds as well. The governor, we like to torque these bolts to 70 inch pounds. Uh, they will get torqued in a star pattern and we'll make one last pass all the way around the cover just to make sure that we didn't miss any bolts. And uh, this is a fiber gasket and we'll actually uh, torque this several times because the gasket will crush or compress as uh, we torque those bolts. And for those of you paying close attention, yes, I did say 70 inch pounds and no, 70 inch pounds does not fall within the torque value range. 70 just happens to be what we like to use on this governor cover. The modulator, we like to torque this bolt to 10 foot pounds. The transmission cooler line connectors uh, on the transmission case here, we torque these to 30 foot pounds. Jumping to the other side of the transmission, the speedo housing. This bolt we like to torque to 70 inch pounds. Moving on, the line pressure port. This plug here, we like to torque that to 90 inch pounds. The manual shaft, also known as the shifter shaft. The nut that goes on the end of the shaft, we like to torque that to 18 foot-pounds. The bell housing, these bolts, we like to torque them to 30 foot-pounds. Moving to the inside of the bell housing, the pump to case bolts, we like to torque those to 18 foot-pounds. Additionally, they get torqued in a star pattern, so it'll be something like so in the shape of a star. When we're done, we like to make one last pass all the way around the pump, just to make sure that we didn't miss any pump bolts while doing the star pattern. Oh, and I almost forgot, we like to use medium strength thread locker on these pump to case bolts. Speaking of the pump, there's also bolts on the other side of the pump. This side of the pump, uh, these bolts here, uh, if you're looking this up in a book or online, you may see it named a number of different ways. It, it could be referred to as the pump stator to pump body bolts, could also be referred to as the pump cover to pump body bolts, or something as simple as the pump halves. 
Uh, regardless of the naming, uh, we like to torque these bolts to 18 foot-pounds. Uh, we'll also use the star pattern on this side of the pump as well. And again, make one last pass all the way around just to make sure that we didn't miss any bolts. Uh, on this topic of the pump, it's also important to note that these pump halves can be misaligned. So they do need to be aligned prior to uh, tightening these bolts. We did cover that in the build series. Uh, once again, uh, links to each of the episodes can be found in the video description down below. With the torque converter installed in the transmission and the transmission installed in the vehicle, the torque converter will then come into contact with our flex plate and we'll be feeding converter bolts through the flex plate and into the torque converter. These bolts, we like to torque to 30 foot pounds and uh, we also like to use medium strength thread locker on these bolts. Speaking of the torque converter, the dust cover. I don't have one handy, but the dust cover would bolt on to this part of the bell housing and uh, basically hide the torque converter, keep foreign objects uh, out of this uh, danger zone here. Um, we've got these four bolt holes and uh, we like to torque uh, these dust cover bolts down to 70 inch pounds. The oil pan, uh, whether we're using a cork gasket or a fiber gasket, uh, we like to torque these bolts down to 70 inch pounds. The oil pan is a large source for oil leaks on this transmission and many transmissions uh, for that matter. Uh, point is, uh, in the Turbo 400 build series, we did cover a number of tips and tricks that can be used. And no, I'm not talking about using uh, silicone or RTV sealer. Uh, but we did uh, include a number of tips and tricks that can be used to minimize oil leaks at the oil pan. So if you're interested in learning more than just torque specs, you can head over to the build series. Links to each of those episodes can be found in the video description down below. The oil filter. This retaining bolt we like to torque to 90 inch pounds. The park pawl bracket. There is no need to remove this during transmission overhaul. However, if it was removed, I'd be torquing these bolts to 18 foot pounds. Moving on, the low reverse servo. These bolts uh, we torque to 18 foot pounds and we also utilize the star pattern. So torque it in the shape of a star. Then we'll make one last pass all the way around the servo, torquing each of the bolts as we go, just to make sure that we didn't miss any bolts. Moving on to the detent solenoid. Both the detent solenoid and the valve body, we like to torque all of these bolts to 90 inch pounds. There is a torquing sequence. Uh, it's a spiral pattern starting from the center of the valve body and working our way out. We would tighten all the valve body bolts and the two detent solenoid bolts. When we're done with the spiral pattern, we like to make one last pass going from one row of bolts to another, working our way all the way down the valve body and to the detent solenoid, just to make sure that we didn't miss any bolts while we were doing the spiral pattern, because it's super easy to miss a bolt. The manual shaft detent lever, uh, also known as the rooster comb, this nut here, uh, if we could get a torque wrench in here easily, we would be torquing this to 18 foot-pounds. However, to be completely honest, we typically use an open-end uh, 9 16th wrench, and we just torque that thing down nice and tight. The center support bolt. With the valve body, the separator plate, and such removed from the transmission, we can then gain easy access to this bolt. This bolt is fed through the transmission case and it threads directly into the center support, hence the name. Uh, prior to installing this bolt, we like to apply a drop or two of medium strength thread locker to it, run the bolt down, and we tighten it to 22 foot-pounds. Tightening this bolt does require a specialty tool. However, one can be easily DIY'd, and we did cover that in greater detail in the Turbo 400 build series. This show is a ton of hours to produce and we could use your support. You can learn more by checking out the video description down below. So we just got done going through the Turbo 400 Torque Specs video. 
We already covered this in the build series, but this super short video is here to support that entire build series. And we've got more content just like this. For example, uh, Turbo 400 in play specs, uh, how to install the torque converter, how uh, fluid capacity levels, and how to check the fluid level on this Turbo 400. Uh, furthermore, uh, we also want to cover some uh, drivability issues that may arise after the transmission has been installed in the vehicle. Uh, for example, the transmission's installed, the fluid level has been set properly, but uh, regardless of that, the vehicle will not back up or move forward. Uh, another uh, scenario is the vehicle moves forward, but it will not upshift out of first gear. And that list just goes on and on. Uh, point is, we've got a lot more in store for you. If you're new here to the channel and you have not already done so, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Once again, my name's Robert and I will see you next time.